Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 7. You'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. The Word of the Lord reads, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized, how? In the name, In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All the men, and all the men were about twelve. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Master, we just ask God today that your anointing would rest upon your messenger. Help us, Lord, to deliver this word that you've placed in my spirit for this hour and time. So many, God, at this moment need this great Holy Ghost blessing, this great infilling of your spirit. We ask, God, that you would just pour yourself out in this service. Let it be even as it was in the days of Peter, even as he yet spake the word. Oh, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard him. Master, today pour yourself out in this service, we pray. Fill every heart, God, to overflowing with this great and wonderful gift. For we ask it in none other than the name of the Lord Jesus, Christ alone, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated today. It's often said of a person who must grow up on, uh, as the offspring of a rich or successful parent that they are walking in their father's shadow or in their parent's shadow. And it can be a very difficult thing to live up to, the legacy of a successful and prosperous parent. Even so today, we who have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, not after the flesh, but rather after the spirit, we must also walk in the steps of our God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is most certainly a tall bill to fill. Amen. Then these are some big shoes, Cody, that we're trying to walk in today. It's a mighty large shadow that we are to walk within, but God has ordained that our efforts uh, to accomplish this task, uh, we would not be left alone in our efforts to accomplish this task. Amen. God didn't leave us alone to walk in his shadow. Amen. I'm talking to us tonight on the topic of walking in the Father's shadow. When we have believed and obeyed the gospel mandate to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, we have not reached the end of our journey, but rather we have just begun that journey. While there are some churches that today teach one is immediately endowed with the gift of the Holy Ghost, immediately upon believing the gospel message. We know today that the truth of the matter is the Holy Ghost is given in a separate transaction, following our faith and following our obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul walks up to these men that he acknowledged as believers. That's one mistake a lot of apostolics make, and, and I think... That's one of the reasons why the apostolic movement has been stymied to the degree that it is, because so often they want to look down their nose at people in other churches and say, oh, they haven't got anything. Well, they don't have the truth. They don't have this Acts 238 message like we've got it. No, they may not, but there's nothing wrong with acknowledging them as believers. Are you hearing me today? There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that at least they're putting their confidence and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe if you acknowledge them as believers, you'd be in a better position to lead them into the truth of God that could further set them free. Right. But when you treat people like they ain't got nothing and they ain't nobody, it's awful hard to lead them anywhere. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's 
One problem I had with the apostolic movement, one of the reasons I fought coming into it for so many years, it wasn't that I didn't see Jesus' name baptism. It wasn't that I didn't understand the oneness of God. I couldn't stand the spirit of some of them people. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be like that. And the Lord said, to preach the truth, you don't have to act like they do. You can do it right. Amen. Amen. So that's what we strive for in this little church, isn't it? Amen. We strive to do it right. Praise God. Amen. Paul came upon these men who were believers at the upper coasts of Ephesus. And he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Clearly, he acknowledged them as believers, but also just as clearly, he was very clear in making the point that the Holy Ghost was not an automatic transaction that occurred at the moment that you believed. He said, since ye believed, hallelujah, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed. The men at Ephesus were fully aware of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they had indeed believed it. But what they had not yet come to understand and embrace and receive was the wonderful promise of God, the baptism and infilling of God's own Holy Spirit. I want you to know today, listen, God does not expect us to walk after the example of Jesus Christ without divine assistance. Do you hear me? God does not, you know, a lot of churches, they claim, well, what we're supposed to do is be like Jesus. We're supposed to act like Jesus. Honey, if you can do that with, without the Holy Ghost, then you're better than God. That's right. That's right. Because even Jesus needed the Holy Ghost to do what he did. Come on now. That's right. That's right. So I'd like to know how people think they can live like the Lord and do so without the Holy Ghost. Mr. Fallbell seems to think he can do it. Amen. Billy Graham seems to think he can do it. But the question remains today. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? After all, the Lord himself had divine assistance in living out his 33 years on this earth. This being true, how then could it be possible that we could live a Christ-like life and not have within us the same spirit which he had within him. Come on now. Amen. If they took the Holy Ghost within him to help him be who he was and live what he lived, how do you think we're going to get away with anything less? In Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 16, the word of the Lord tells us, Paul is writing, and if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, he didn't assume that Christ was in them. Amen. He said, if Christ be in you, it's the big word. He said, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Brother Willie, I want you to know that in, on the inside tonight, you're wearing a robe of righteousness. Glory to God. I want you to know on the inside tonight, there is a white robe that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb that nobody can take away from you. This whole body is dead because of sin. It'll die one day. Glory to God. It'll be buried. But I want you to know that the spirit within you has been washed up. It has been sanctified. And it will one day be glorified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. He said, but if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him, now do you notice again, he uses the term if. Again, in the same passage of scripture, he uses the term if. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, 
ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I know a lot of Christian people, if it wasn't for fear, they'd have no reason to go to church. Amen. If it wasn't for the preachers scaring the fire out of them every Sunday from the pulpit, they'd have no reason to go to the altar. But Paul said, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. I want you to know today that the Holy Ghost is given as an agent in your life so that at the last trump of God, there is something in you as powerful as what the man Jesus Christ has within him that will also quicken your mortal body the same way that it quickened his mortal body. His spirit didn't leap up out of his body. His body leaped up out of this grave clothes. That's what happened. And I want you to know, children, that God puts his Holy Ghost in you as a down payment on your salvation. It doesn't make you perfect, but it makes you able to be perfect. Hallelujah! It's not the finish, but it is indeed the uh, primer coat so that at the re redemption of the church, the resurrection of God's people, you can be finished. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you ever realized it or not, but a primer coat don't look near as pretty as the finish does. <laughs> right. 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 <clears throat> but you know what? If you expect that finish to hold and stick onto that car, you sure enough better put a primer on it. Amen. If you don't want stains, if you don't want dirt and filth that's been up on that wall for a number of years to seep through the paint and show, once you've painted it brand new, you better put a primer coat on it to cover up all the dirt and all the filth. Remember what we did, Brother Willie, at that building over there <laughs> on Ross Avenue? You can't just put up a single coat sometime and expect the job to get done. Right. And God says, I give the Holy Ghost as a primer coat. Hallelujah. Right. So at the redemption of the church, when God's people are resurrected, and I spray paint you brand new with a white that will never, ever again be able to be dirty, a white that will never again be able to be spoiled by sin and unbelief, when I spray paint you with that glorious white top that the angels walk in every day, I want you to know, children, it'll stick because you've been blind. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Doesn't make us perfect, but glory to God, it makes us able to be perfected. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost baptism allows us to walk in our Father's shadow. Right. The Spirit of the Lord guides us and He leads us daily through this life. But not only does He offer us leadership, the Word of the Lord promises us also that this experience affords us power. It doesn't just give you leadership, it gives you power. Amen. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Lord Jesus Christ says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, my word. I want you to know today, in the Greek that the New Testament was written in, the very word that is translated power, as it appears here in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, is derived from the Greek word dynamos, which is the very word from which we get our word dynamite. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> when the Spirit of the Lord immerses us in His own presence and power, He places a substance within us that demons cannot resist and sickness must surrender to. When the presence and power of our God is fused with our spiritual man, our walk with God becomes so vivid and so intimate that 
We've been adopted children. We've been grafted into the family tree by the indwelling presence of God's Spirit. And from the moment we welcome the presence of God's Spirit into our lives, we are sealed, the Bible says, unto the day of redemption. Satan knows it. And that's why he fights so hard and tries to keep people from getting this Holy Ghost. Because he knows that the moment you get it, you're sealed. Hallelujah. He can't touch you. He can't get near you. He'll never be able to turn you around. I'll tell you what, you can get a Holy Ghost filled believer to backslide. You can get them to act wrong and do the wrong thing. But I'll tell you what you'll never get them to do. You'll never get them to deny one God in Christ. And Jesus is his name. You'll never get them to deny baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, glory to God. You'll never get them to deny the reality of the Holy Ghost in dwelling because of it, they've been sealed with a promise that the devil cannot break. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, my Lord. I don't know whether I'm so happy with Jesus or mad at the devil right now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Glory to God. The Lord does not put his spirit within us for the purpose of sitting like water in a vessel. But rather he causes the spring to well up within us. We are not the source. He is. That's right. And this spring rushes up from within our deepest parts, constantly cleansing and removing those things which do not serve a constructive purpose in our life. Hallelujah. When you get the Holy Ghost, you got a well springing up within you unto an everlasting life. And it'll wash out all the garbage and all the filth. I like to see crack try to stand in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I like to see cocaine try to stand in the presence of the Holy Ghost. It can't happen. Glory to God. It can't happen. David Wilkerson started his ministry years ago in New York City for young men and women that were involved in gangs. He called it Teen Challenge. After the first 10 years or so, the Teen Challenge was in operation. The United States government sent representatives to his ministry and said, we want to know what it is you're doing with these young people. Because we have programs that we sponsor. We have programs that we finance. People are able to beat drugs, but 80% of them go back after a matter of a year or two. And your success rate is over 80%. More people stay with this thing than go back in our program. What are you doing? David Wilkerson said, I don't think you'll like my answer. He said, that's all right, tell me. He said, we preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We preach that if people will pray through to an indwelling and an infilling of God's great divine power, that God puts dynamite in their soul, that crack and cocaine cannot stand up against. Hallelujah. He breaks the power of addiction. He breaks the power of alcohol. He breaks the power of sin, glory to God. And he sets his people free. Because you are not. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. <laughs> we are not put back in bondage. <laughs> but we are brought into liberty. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I want you to know that when the spirit of addiction tries to stand against the presence of the spirit of our king, somebody got to leave town. You remember the old western movie, There Ain't Room 
in this town for the two of us. There ain't room enough in this town for the two of us. For when the spirit of addiction and the spirit of Almighty God try to occupy the same place, I want you to know somebody's going to move. And Jesus said, I ain't moving. Once I get there, I'm there to stay. So I want you to know, children, if you need help overcoming what the devil's overcome you with, all you need is the Holy Ghost. All you need is to open your life up and let God fill you to overflowing with his divine presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My Lord, have mercy. When we begin to step out of God's divine, overshadowing the Spirit gently reminds us to step back in line so that we not succumb to the arid torments of a hot, dry, and harsh world. He gives us leadership, but He also gives us power. The Lord Himself promised in Mark 16, 14 through 18, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Let me repeat that for those that might be a little difficult in their hearing. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you go to a Jimmy Swagger meeting and you pray a prayer in the altar, you are not saved. They may tell you you're saved, but you are not saved. You need to follow through on your faith by obedience. You need to do something. You need to put feet on your faith. You need to get into the waters of that system. And don't let them marry you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Because there's no power in them words. But there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Oh, I told you, brother, we're an apostolic church around here. Proud of it. Glory to God. Amen. But he said, Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. It sounds like power to me. It sounds like dynamite to me. Hallelujah. It sounds like God is putting something mighty potent inside of me. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for this today. And just in case the devil gets confused and wants to think, that nothing happens in the physical realm when the Holy Ghost from heaven comes in. God has chosen to operate in such a way that there is a physical evidence. There is a physical sign, as it were, that one has received God's precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And that sign or that evidence that we have received the gift of the Holy Ghost is a supernatural ability to speak in a language otherwise unknown to us. We call it speaking with other tongues. If you remember the Lord just said in Mark 17, 17, they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, my Lord have mercy. Well, I'm trying to preach. Y'all help me now. I'm trying. <clears throat> the Old Testament has prophesied of this manifestation of God's Spirit being poured out. Paul writes of the Old Testament prophecy as he offers teaching concerning the matter of speaking with other tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 21, Paul states, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Hallelujah. This ability to speak with other tongues is not given without good reason. God doesn't just give you the Holy Ghost and you speak with other tongues as a gimmick. No. It provides us with a communication system directly with God that originates in the depths of our soul and not merely from the top of our head or the back of our mouth. Do you hear me now? Amen. God puts a radio that transmits straight to the throne of glory deep down in the deepest part of your soul. And when you get to praying in the Holy Ghost and you begin to surrender to the Holy Ghost and let the Spirit of the Lord pray through you and help you pray. Honey, the Bible says you pray according to the will of God. Every word comes out of your mouth. You may not understand it, but you know it's in the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he knows the 
the mind of God. He knows what is the will of God. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28, the Apostle Paul wrote, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So when you get that tongue-talking mechanism going on, I'm telling you, God didn't give that to you just as window dressing. There's a reason that it's there. Amen. What a marvelous tool and a powerful weapon that God gives us. Even when we don't know what to pray, even in our darkest trial, the Spirit of the Lord within us will help us to pray, even though we don't know exactly what we're saying. And every word that proceeds out of our mouth in whatever language God chooses to enable us to speak, it will be in the absolute, perfect, and divine will of our Father. Hallelujah. We'll be walking and talking in the Father's shadow. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost helps us to stay in our Father's shadow. Amen. Glory to God. Have you ever said something to someone that you desperately needed to say, and immediately you felt the weight and burden lifted from your shoulders as you spoke that which you so much needed to speak? Well, listen, when the Holy Ghost speaks through us, we benefit in this same way. After all, every word he helps us to speak is in the absolute perfect plan and will of God. Oh, how the burden is lifted from our souls as we allow the indwelling Spirit of the Lord to flow through us, enabling our vocal cords to say that which we so very much need to say, but cannot find the words to do so. This, then, is why the Apostle Jude recorded this admon uh, admonishment in Jude 1 and verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, in the Holy Ghost. You see, because you know that wonderful feeling when you unburden yourself and you say what you need to say. Well, that's what happens when you're praying in the Spirit and you build yourself up because as you're standing before God, you're saying everything you need to say and it's all the burden is being lifted and you feel yourself getting lighter and you feel yourself getting stronger and you feel yourself feeling better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With every passing moment. And believe me, I've had the Holy Ghost a long time and I'll tell you that's the truth. Amen. I've gone through some difficult experiences in my life. Amen. Tough times. When I was out of church for about four years before I came into affirming ministry, because I didn't think there was a place for me in the church anymore. I remember times that I'd say to Jason, I'm going to go in the room. I need to be alone for a while. He was my partner at the time. I said, don't worry about me, don't bother me, just leave me be. And I went in that room, and Brother Willie, I closed up that door, and I want you to know, I get to just crying before God and praying. I wasn't even in church. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord would begin to flow in me and through me and on me and around me. Oh, my God. And I just begin to magnify God in the Spirit. And I begin to pray in the Spirit. And oh, how the burden would be lifted. And how the cleansing would come. And how the hurts would be healed. Hallelujah. How the fears would be allayed. Because God would just touch me over and over. He said, child, I told you I will never. Never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care if the world comes to an end. I will never leave you. When are you going to understand this thing? Once you get a tiger by the tail, you're going to have to deal with it through eternity because I'm not going to let you go. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Dear Jesus. Children, I want you to know today, the Lord does not just ask us to walk in His shadow. He doesn't ask us to simply follow after His example. And He doesn't ask us to put into truth, uh, to practice His every truth and teaching. 
No, he didn't just ask us to do these things. He offers us the power uh -huh, and the leadership to do so. If you believe this gospel today, you need to take one step further and just welcome the presence of God's gift of the Holy Ghost into your life. The power is there to change. The power is there to deliver. The power is there to strengthen. The power is there to edify. Hallelujah today, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive ye the Holy Ghost to the glory of God. We need to experience this promise. We need to experience this power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Would you stand with me a moment? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to turn some music on in the background here a little bit. <laughs> I just got to tell you, Cody, I baptized somebody once, and they got as excited as you did. <laughs> I didn't really didn't say that. It just goes <laughs> out. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I want you to know honestly today, this Holy Ghost thing is real, friend. I'm going to tell you, this is not a joke. This is not a game. This is not a gimmick. This thing's real. I got the Holy Ghost when I was a kid in the altars of a Pentecostal church in Connecticut. I tell people, you know, the devil will make you afraid. He wants you to be afraid of it, is what he wants you to do. He wants to make you afraid, because that, that's the thing that will hinder your ability to receive, is fear. But we just read a few moments ago, God has not given us the spirit of fear. If that's not God. When you're fearing, that's not God. Amen. But I want you to know, you don't have to control the Holy Ghost. You don't have to beg the Holy Ghost. You don't even have to pray for the Holy Ghost. All you've got to do is receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. All you have to do is receive the Holy Ghost. I preached in one church one time years ago, and I was sharing this simple concept with people in this church. I said, all you have to do is receive the Holy Ghost. You don't have to pray for it, ask for it, or nothing. Just receive it. It's already given. It's given to the church. The gift is given. You just need to accept it. And as I was saying these things, one of my church members, her name was Judy, and bless her heart, she'd been seeking the Holy Ghost. Before she came to my church, she was going to a charismatic church. And she started coming to my church. And that little lady, bless her heart, she stood there and I looked down at her and all of a sudden I just saw her eyes just swell up and tears begin to flow and her little mouth just went bah, 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 and I could see she got the Holy Ghost standing right there. Standing right in that spot. And she said to me afterwards, it was so easy. <laughs> Why did it take this long? It was so easy. She said, when you said, just receive ye the Holy Ghost, she said, brother, it was like it just clicked and I just received it and bam, it was over. That's all it takes. All you've got to do is open your heart and your life and say, Lord, come in, fill me to overflow in Jesus' name. God ain't going to give you nothing bad. I promise you that. Amen. God don't give out bad things. This song says, my God specializes in good things. Amen. God's going to give you good things. And with that is the power to overcome instead of constantly being overcome. Do you hear me now? A lot of us know what it feels like constantly to feel like you're being run over and run down. And I want you to know God has the power for you to be the overcomer instead of being the one that's constantly overcome. Would you bow your heads with me, Master? We love you tonight. We thank you, Jesus, for the great, wonderful anointing, the power and presence of God we felt in this place tonight. Jesus, your Holy Ghost is real. God, your power is real. We feel it in this place. Lord, you're touching hearts right now. You're speaking to people right now in the name of Jesus. The anointing, the presence of God is touching somebody right now. Amen. The anointing breaks the yoke. Just let the anointing break the yoke. In the name of Jesus, Master, 
in the name of Jesus. Break the yoke today, God. Every bondage, Lord, today, every chain, every torment of the enemy that would come against our soul, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just claim victory and deliverance to the glory of God. Master, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is moving, folks. God is speaking to some hearts in this room right now. In the name of Jesus, if you need special prayer tonight and you want us to pray for you, you want us to anoint you with oil and pray for you. I don't know what your reason is. It doesn't matter. It's not important. But if you want us to anoint you with oil tonight and pray for you, I want you. There's so few of us, you can't feel embarrassed. But I just want you to come down to the front of the sanctuary right now. We're going to believe God for you. We're going to believe God to put His power source in your life to help you become an overcomer. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Master today. Oh God, we see. Jesus, we see. We see. We see. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Master, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Willie, Brother Willie, get your friend here. Bring him down. Bring him down.